going to be joined right now by House Foreign Affairs Committee member and co-chair of the Congressional Uyghur Caucus, Congressman Chris Smith, Republican from New Jersey. Congressman, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Emma. Absolutely. Before I get to that, if I could just get your response to the New York Times reporting the breaking news that your governor will be announcing that he is going to lift the mask mandate there for school children and school teachers. Uh, your thoughts, is it about time? What do you think? You took the words right out of my mouth. It's about time. You know, children in school have been shown to be the least at risk, and yet we've had this, I think, very foolish mandate imposed upon them. And same goes with vaccines. They should be voluntary, not mandatory. Uh, and those in the high-risk areas are the ones that ought to be uh, getting the Trump, um, and let's give credit where credit is due, uh, yep. to his vaccine. Yeah. But I not this this broad based uh, and you know for children especially on the vaccine and there, there's not a good body of evidence at all about its efficacy and safety especially its safety yep we'll continue to monitor that again uh he is sure. the governor is expected to make that announcement later goes into effect in march uh new york times reporting uh back to the top story your expectations from today's meeting <clears throat> biden meeting with german chancellor today olaf schultz um we also have uh french president emmanuel macron in moscow uh, a lot of high stakes talks what do you expect from biden and schultz well, my hope is that, you know, they will use the pipeline uh, as a lever. Uh, he should have never approved it, he being President Biden. You know, when he cancels a pipeline uh, from Canada to the United States and then turns around and allows Putin to get a pipeline, that is theater of the absurd. And that's also pandering and enabling uh, of Putin's terrible uh, uh, dictatorship that he is running now. Uh, so I don't expect a whole lot, but I hope that the Germans will, will say, OK, we're not going to allow that. That, that, you know, fuel to, to flow through the pipeline. But I don't expect that that'll happen. And we're seeing, you know, you know, you got to, you know this, Sean, uh, after Afghanistan and the message that that sent, which is profound and all in the negative, uh, our European partners and our friends and allies are less likely to listen to and adhere to any kind of purported leadership by President Biden. And that's very serious, you know, whether it be Taiwan or whether it be, uh, you know, uh, Ukraine. Mm. And remember, the Crimea happened right after the Olympics. And I am very, very concerned with this buildup that uh, a war may be imminent. Well, it's not just you. White House National Security Advisor exactly. talked about this, too, issuing a warning about the prospect of a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Here's that sound. We're in the window where something could happen that is a, a military escalation and invasion of Ukraine could happen at any time. Um, we believe that the Russians have put in place the capabilities to mount a significant military operation into Ukraine. And we have been working hard to prepare a response. President Biden has rallied our allies. He's reinforced and reassured our partners on the eastern flank. He's provided material support to the Ukrainians. And he's offered the Russians a diplomatic path if that's what they choose instead. Is there still a path for diplomacy, in your opinion, Congressman? In my opinion, there's always a path for diplomacy. It needs to be embraced uh, with all the gusto we can bring to bear on this. Uh, because, again, once the war starts... The loss of life, the refugees, uh, is catastrophic, particularly with that large of a deployment uh, on the border of Ukraine. So there needs to be, I think, you know, an all-out effort uh, by all of the allies and with Putin, uh, you know. But I I'm, I'm very concerned, and even Jake Sullivan is as well, uh, that things are in motion that are not good. You know, I'm the author of the Belarus Democracy Act. I've written four laws on that. Uh, we're very concerned, we're all concerned, that Belarus now, has become increasingly, it's always been a, a puppet of, of, of the Kremlin, but more so now, and given its proximity uh, to Ukraine, becomes a, another jumping off point. Congressman Michael Waltz put out a recent ad <clears throat> um, pushing hard uh, against China because all this comes amid the Olympics happening sure. right now in Beijing. And China under fire uh, after choosing what is reported a Uyghur athlete to light the Olympic flame during the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics. A U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Linda Thomas-Greenfield, blasted this move. Here's that. 
This is an effort by the Chinese to distract us from the real issue here at hand, that Uyghurs are being tortured. And Uyghurs are, are the victims of human rights violations by, uh, by the Chinese. And uh, we have to keep that front and center. Congressman, final thoughts on that topic. Well, I'm deeply concerned about what is next. It could be Taiwan. Uh, I'm the one, along with Marco Rubio, who wrote the IOC back in uh, 2018, saying, move the venue. Do not uh, allow a genocidal regime under Xi Jinping, uh, who has committed atrocities. He ought to be at The Hague for crimes against humanity and for genocide, not hosting the Olympic Games and getting a standing ovation. Uh, the uh, Denegier, the woman who lit the, uh, she didn't do very well in her event. She's gone, apparently. Nobody knows where she is, but never got to talk to the press. And she did that, I am certain, under duress. That's what they do at the Potemkin village. It's what the Nazis did with their concentration camps and, and the like. They, they did propaganda films to try to gloss over it all. Now we're dealing with the exact same thing mm -hmm. uh, with this massive loss of life, concentration camps, like I said, the loss of Hong Kong. Now, I've chaired 75 congressional hearings on human rights uh, abuses in China, I've written many resolutions on it. Uh, it is the worst it has been under Xi Jinping. Uh, we're back to Mao Zedong's type of reign, where you crush the opposition, and they're doing it to all faiths, but they're doing it with particular uh, hatred towards the Muslims, the Uyghurs. We'll leave it right there. Congressman Chris Smith of New Jersey. Thank you so much, Congressman. Good to see you.